Okay. Thank you. Are you ready for some snow coming? No, absolutely not. No, of course not, because <laughs> you were just in Florida. I was, I was. So as we are here in Rhode Island, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful sunny day getting ready at the Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center. We're not talking snow today because there is no snow yet. We are talking about to building or renovating or remodeling a home and some steps you need to take. So Robin Garceau is our interior designer and real estate agent. You are our expert. So thank you again for joining us. You're welcome. So let's talk about some steps. A lot of people want to just build a home from scratch or uh, if not, renovating a home. So let's talk about really kind of some steps you need to take to do that. So if you are building a home, what's the first thing you really need to do? Before you um, meet with an architect or start really creating your plans for a home, the first thing you really want to do is um, think about your lifestyle. How do you want to live in this house? How do you want to feel when you walk into a room? That's so important because basically that's why you're doing this. You want to love where you live when you're done with this whole project. So what I tell clients all the time is, first of all, try to work with an interior designer right from the plans, right um, when you're meeting the architect. Because there are things that a designer will think about <clears throat> that maybe not, an architect may not. So he's always thinking about the outside of the house and what it's going to look like. I tend to think of how do you want to visualize it in the end? How do you want it to look like? How do you want to feel? So you want to, what I call, is build backwards. Yeah. Know the end result and then build from there. And you said you want to make a li You need to scoot over here, Robin. We're not going to see you. She keeps running away from me. I'm just scary. I'm a scary person. You said you want to make a list, and yes. that's important. So why is it important to make a list, and what should a list include? Well, when you make a list, um, you want to include, first of all, who's going to live there? Is it you? Is it you and your partner, you and your dog, uh, your kids, your in-laws, or your parents? Um, do you need a space, say, for you really love watching TV or have an epic movie night on a Saturday night, and so you want a large screen TV in your family room? Well, you can't necessarily have a large screen TV over a fireplace, and a lot of times that's what happens when you don't think about your lifestyle first. You may want to, um, say you play guitar, and you want to jam with your friends, and you need a room for that. Um, you want to wake up in the morning and sit and meditate at sunrise, so you need a chair facing the sunrise in a room, so that's where you need the windows. You want to watch um, football on Sundays. Well, if you have too many windows in a room, you get the glare of the sun, yeah. and you can't necessarily really watch TV. Or an architect may suggest these gorgeous windows that are really an unusual shape, and you put them in your bedroom. Well, unless you want to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning <laughs> every morning, it's going to cost a fortune to cover those windows because they're in odd shape. So you really have to think about your lifestyle before you do anything else. And that will really help you with your architectural plans. It will help you with your remodel or even purchasing a home. So um, those are the steps you really want to sit down and write these things down because you don't want to just keep everything in your head because it gets too overwhelming. And a list can really help. I know Kristen, our organizer, <laughs> would love this step. Yes, I was thinking definitely. about that. Yeah, I'm a list person. If, if anybody knows me, I'm definitely a list person. So, And I like that idea as well, too. Something that just came to mind is um, thinking about in terms of who you are, who you live with, and the types of rooms and things that you would like to have or things that maybe aren't necessary. One thing that just came to mind is when I was at home visiting friends and family in Seattle, one of my best friends was looking for a home, and one of the homes that she went to had a mud room. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in Seattle, yeah. something like that is so beneficial, but something like that here would be beneficial too, because think about all your snow gear that you have to take off, totally, yeah. something like that. And maybe if you don't have kids or you don't have a dog, maybe you don't need it, but 
a lot of houses here don't even have coat closets. No, they really don't, especially with the open concept that you see so often now. Yeah. Um, I'm working with a client right now, and you know he wants more cozy, closed-in rooms, and she wants more of an open space. Open. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to get that great, that perfect mix. And you can do it, but a lot of times, and I hate to repeat it, but a lot of times people don't remember where to put the TV. It's yeah. an afterthought where really you have to think about your life. Do I watch TV? Do I want to sit down and not have a TV over my fireplace? But that's what happens a lot. Um, do you want a dining room, a formal dining room? How many people are you going to fit in that dining room? Or do you want just a large kitchen table where everybody kind of gathers? But can you fit that in the space between, say, your kitchen and your family room? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different things that will really, that really relies on your lifestyle. How many people do you entertain? Do you have, you know, Patriots parties every Sunday? Do you have a huge family at Thanksgiving? But remember, too, you only use that dining room table maybe once a year. Thanksgiving, Christmas, and... Exactly. So how do you get that to convert to a large area? So you may remove a wall to open up your table and maybe put another wall somewhere else to kind of make the room a little cozier. Those are all the things you really have to start thinking about before you meet with an architect. So before you're building or if you are looking to renovate your other home. Right. Um, and so that's what you're talking about, to, about making lists or building or renovating. Okay, so when you are building or renovating, you say start with your interior designer before finalizing any architectural plans. And you said you call it building backwards. So right. why is building backwards so important? So say, for instance, I was working with a client in Massachusetts and um, we were doing a large addition in our house. She had wanted to do, she had a specific idea in mind where this sunroom, family room, gathering room type of place, she wanted simple window treatments that were set inside her window. So, well, to, to set a window treatment inside your window, you have to have at least three inches to put something in there, and a lot of builders don't do that. They have a window set inside two by four construction instead of two by six, and now all of a sudden, I can't put the window treatment inside. So with t speaking with her and discussing the final look, we decided, okay, the construction's gonna be a little different in that room because we wanna set the window treatments inside. Once we started talking about that, we took it even further. Now we went to the transoms above the window. So what the contractor was talking about was giving her a window that had one piece, transom and window, all in one piece. Oh, wow. She didn't want to do that. So we figured out we need to do a separate transom with the window now. So now, before it's being built, before you know the contractors come in and stop building, we already knew the types of windows and window treatments we wanted in that room so now the contractor didn't have to say, okay, well now we have to go back to the drawing board, redraw everything, refigure the um, estimate, because that may change the estimate as well. So when you're sitting down thinking of all these things, there's a snowball effect that happens with building, because one thing can turn into the next, can turn into the next. So it's really important to build that. What if you don't know? Well, you don't know what you want. <laughs> well, what happens is then we go to like maybe some inspiration photos. Okay. Kind of get an interior or a style or a look that you like. And with, with an interior designer, they can say, well, this is what you really need to think about. Um, do, again, do you want a lot of light in the room? Do you want your kitchen to be lively and light and airy? Or do you want um, your bedroom to be calm and serene and maybe not so much light in there? So if you're speaking to somebody with a lot of experience, they know what questions to ask okay. you to direct you to where you want to be with your construction. And getting that extra help really makes a difference. It really if you're, does. If you're undecided on what you want, maybe getting that extra help makes a it, difference. Yes, it does. And then you said... Um, 
that uh, making sure to do that extra research when it comes to room sizes and furniture because shopping can be tough. Yes. Well, that's another thing. When you're building, everything is very abstract. So when you're looking at plans, your plan can say, okay, the bedroom is maybe 15 by 20. Well, that's including the walls. So people don't realize when you're looking at plans, it's not quite 15 by 20. It's probably 14 by maybe 19. Oh, I have no so idea. So if you're in a room, if you have a master bedroom now that's maybe 18 wide, and you're looking at these plans, and it looks nice and it looks kind of big, go in a room that's 14 feet wide. If you're living somewhere now, take a measuring tape wherever you go and measure the room. Say, okay, this is a 14 by 18 foot room. Is that going to give me the amount of space I need for all of my furniture? Um, get to know, it's, uh, one, of my, um, one of my developers that I work with, Matt Davitt, he calls it trying it on. You try a room on for size. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it's so abstract you just don't understand really or you don't can't conceptualize it and unless you're doing this all the time how could you possibly conceptualize it so i like to explain to people okay this is this is a nice layout but do you realize you have more square footage in your garage <laughs> than you do in your family that room. makes sense so People don't understand that. They look at plans and something may be labeled a great room, and yet it may not even have enough room to put a, you know, a sofa, a love seat, and two chairs, because in your mind, you have a house that has a great room, and it's 20 by 30. Well, okay, this great room is 10 by 20, or something like that. And um, I'm like, okay, well, you, do you realize that we can put a love seat and maybe two little tiny chairs? And that's not necessarily a great room. But because that's what you're used to, you see the words great room and you think it's really large. So try it on. Try, try it, it out. out. Try it on. Yeah, for me, square footage doesn't necessarily mean anything. Right. I always have to have someone explain it to me or put it into context. So that means certain things. So definitely trying things on for size. Yes. Um, and then you said create a practical TV wall and you kind of talked about this because things can turn a little wonky if you're not creating it, envisioning it yourself. Yeah, you really do. I mean, when you think about sitting down watching TV, nowadays um, <clears throat> a lot of architects, one of the first things is, well, we need a fireplace. Well, do you really need a fireplace? Or if you want that fire, if you only have the one wall for your TV, maybe put a low, contemporary, sleek fireplace underneath. But it may look a little odd with an 80-inch TV over yeah. So um, something you might do as well is you have a large screen TV and you put really long contemporary sconces next to it. Oh, so nice. that now makes it look much nicer. Put the fireplace in a corner or on a side wall or eliminate it altogether if you cannot fit it. Some people like putting fireplaces in a bedroom. Oh, it's gorgeous when people do that. Gorgeous. I love that look. Yeah. But it's not beautiful when you can't fit a dresser. All you can <laughs> fit true. is a bed. If you have room for it. <laughs> exactly. If you can afford that and have room for it, go for it. Exactly. So if, as long as the bedroom is big enough, and I'm not saying to make this house enormous or and make that room enormous, over a bit. but what you want to do is just you have to be aware of space because it eliminate the fireplace it's going to be worse if you put it in and you don't have any room for anything else uh, than putting it in and after the fact saying oh god where am i going to put a dresser uh, and and if you don't need it you don't need it right don't don't feel it's pressured. always nice but <laughs> yeah um, and we just have a couple more minutes left because we're having a great time talking about this. Um, and you said add the cost of furniture and window treatments into the budget. Why is that important? It, it, it can get out so, of control? It, it can absolutely get out of control. So many times I work with clients and you go and look at tile. Well, at, the, at that moment, your sole focus is all about choosing the tile. And you see this gorgeous tile and it costs three hundred dollars a square foot oh and you God. have to have it okay that's beautiful and i you know i encourage doing beautiful things 
But if it blows your budget where you at the end cannot afford to put furniture and window treatments because of these big windows that you wanted to have, yeah. you cannot find ready-made window treatments to fit them, so now you need to do custom window treatments. Those are the things you have to think of ahead of time. Yeah. So many people when they're building don't build in a budget for furniture, window treatments, accessories. Accessories alone can, can be quite a bit of money. Um, artwork, that's something you want to think about. How big your square footage is, how, what you're taking with you from your other residents, what you're not going to have, are you going to have to furnish the whole thing? And be realistic with that. Go out shopping now and see what a sofa costs. So see what you can do a whole house for. It may be $100,000. So you need to add that into your budget. So when you get to the end, now you can't enjoy your house. Because <laughs> you, you can't live because in it, you can't afford it. You have no furniture in it. Exactly, but it happens more often than you think. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah I bet. You need to be able to live in your house and enjoy the fact that you just made it. You house. totally want to love where you live by the time you get there. So these are all the things that will help you get there. And you said when you're shopping for your home, the same questions apply. And really, that location matters. I know for me, location always makes a difference. And you know, it's the old adage, location, location, location. It's been that adage for uh, forever, and there's a reason why it's forever. So when you're looking for a home that you may renovate or build, if you're looking for a lot, you want to make sure it, it's the perfect location for you. You want to make sure the schools are the ones you want. Um, if it's an ocean view, it's always so important. You can make your home look like anything. I can transform a home to make it be absolutely beautiful, but if it's not in the right location, it can never be in the right location. Sure. Yeah. So a home on a, on a piece of land can always be renovated, but the land you cannot move. It is where it is. So that's really important. Yeah, I think school districts are big around here. I know for me, I like being able to walk places. Mm -hmm. uh, Safety is a concern in certain areas, but that makes sense too. It, the, you can always change the house. Exactly, uh, exactly. So when you're looking at a house, you might walk in and say, oh my God, I can't stand this paint. Paint can change. A I've wall been, can move. I've been fascinated with people. I've heard so much that people are just blown away by different paints and so turned off. And it's like people cannot envision seeing exactly. a wall with a different color. Exactly. And that's why I think this combination uh, that I do is so perfect because I've been in the interior design industry for close to 30 years. I've had my real estate license now for about seven and um, I work with Lila Delman Real Estate International and uh, Melanie Delman, who I have gotten very close with. She invited me to join her team. Um, we work really well together. They have a lifestyle approach to this whole concept. Mm -hmm. so, um, so this combination of what I do is it's very powerful because it gives you the information, whether you're building, whether you're renovating, whether you're purchasing, it gives you the power to know the end result before you do. Exactly. Yes. And then you said, uh, know that if you want to make those renovations, you should also be able to include that in your budget as well when you're shopping. Exactly. So if you are purchasing a home and, um, again, put money in there for into your budget for your furniture, your accessories, your artwork, because any type of home you purchase, you more than likely you'll want to renovate in some regard. So. It depends on what you think you're going to be doing to your house. If it's a coat of paint and throwing some furniture in there, piece of cake. Um, you, you include your furniture and your window treatments. Do not forget about window treatments because ready-made window treatments are very difficult to fit on certain windows. Oh. <laughs> so a lot of times you have to do custom window treatments. They're, they're nicer, they're, they last longer, and you do it once and they're there for 10 or 15 years and they always look beautiful. So you want to include that in your budget because again, you don't want to walk in, buy a house, and now you're house poor and you can't, you can't put what you want in this house to love where you live. It's just not, um, not a good thing to do.
And you want to be comfortable and confident in your home and the choices that you've made. Totally. Yeah, exactly. definitely. Robin, thank you so much. I feel so enlightened when I end up making a decision on where I want to live <laughs> when I grow up, right? Exactly. I'm just thinking of all those windows that I have in, in our place that are so big and outrageous. And it's like, oh, sometimes you just want to cover it up with a towel because you're like, oh, it's too big. And exactly. <laughs> all the lights coming in. And <laughs> and you cannot find ready, win ready made window treatments for those type of things. Absolutely not. Exactly. You can't find it. No. Oh, Robin Gerso, thank you so much. So she was filling us in on building, shopping, renovating a home. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can always reach out to Robin as well. So thank you so much for filling us in. You're I'm going to have more information for you if you're curious on Go Local Prof. So thank you and can't wait to, to see you next time. You're going to be fresh back from a conference next time we see yes, you. So definitely. we'll get in touch. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much, Robin. Appreciate it.